doing an internship at a radio station in Boston. Uh, it was actually an AM radio station that, that only uh, stayed on the air from sunup to sundown. But uh, I got the internship. I was working uh, for the uh, director of music, the music director. It was her job to basically select uh, what music would be played. And um, basically I met um, Kim Ferguson. She was at Arista Records at the time. She was the Northeast Regional Promotion Director for Arista. She was in town promoting a record. I believe it might have been Tony Braxton's record, I'm not sure. And uh, while Tony was there, uh, signing autographs and doing interviews and drops, uh, things that you know artists do at radio stations to promote their records, I was speaking to Kim and getting to know her and learning about you know, going to different record stores and tracking and checking on promotional items and making sure that the records were, you know, visual, etc. And one thing led to another, and I got an internship um, at, as the street promoter for Arista, which later turned into a job as the uh, Boston rep for Arista Records underneath Kim Ferguson. So from that point, uh, I worked, uh, of course, all Arista's records, which included uh, the subsidiaries, Rowdy Records, so that was like artists like Monica and uh, Illegal and Rampage, and then of course the uh, Bad Boy artists, which included uh, Biggie, Craig Mack, uh, Total, uh, Faith Evans, and uh, all the, all of their first records, uh, including a um, uh, One Twelve record, and. Um, and then there was the LaFace Records project, which were my favorite. That was TLC, uh, Usher, Outkast, Goody Mob, and Tony Braxton, of course. So, uh, yeah, that's basically how I got my start, uh, professionally speaking, in the music industry. As important as they was, and, 
in, you know, 20 years ago or whatever. So, um, timelessness is, is important to me, being able to transcend from my years as a street promoter for Arista Records in the 90s to today, being a publicist, uh, you know, that's pretty important to me. Uh, being an innovator and diverse, diversifying are things that are, are very important to me also. And what I mean by that is being diverse, being able to do a variety of different things. Currently, I'm a radio host uh, and a publicist. Uh, and, and so far as the music industry is concerned, I'm also an author. But as far as the music game is concerned, you know, I'm doing publicity work for clients. And uh, also being a radio host assists me with being uh, more of a power player for my uh, for the clients that I do publicity work for. And being innovative, meaning that I try to do different things. I'm an Aries, so I get bored pretty quickly. I don't want to do the same thing twice. If it's been done, I probably don't want to have anything to do with it. You know, So I'm always about trying new things and uh, exploring different ideas when it comes to uh, using tactics to promote my clients or whatever projects I'm working on. Be able to shake hands. Uh, what, I, what I say by that is be able to network with people um, and, and, and give a, a positive feel. Um, negative energy doesn't work. Rappers seem to think that I'm using rappers as an example because hip hop is such a masculine and aggressive, um, edgy um, genre. Uh, but a lot of rappers don't get it that when you're in those industry parties and you're in those you know meetings, you know all of that that gruff and street stuff. You got to leave that outside the door. You know that's uh, that's not how it works in the real world. When you're trying to get a deal or you're trying to get somebody to invest in you or endorse you or put some money in your pocket. Um, so you gotta learn to shake hands and be professional. Um, definitely be humble. No matter how big you get, be humble. You never know whose hand you're shaking. You never know who knows who. This industry is very small. Everybody really does know everybody, especially if you've been around for a while. So, you know, it would be advantageous to you as an artist that's trying to, you know, come up in the game and, and be professional to have a reputation of having humility. And to this day, there are artists that I've worked with, I won't say any names, that were anything but you, you know, uh, humble, very arrogant. And I never forgot that. And a lot of them today are not where they should be, not because they're not talented, but because of their attitudes and the, the way that they came off to people. So I would say be very humble. Uh, be willing to listen to any and everybody. It doesn't mean you have to trust uh, any and everybody you shouldn't expect to do that of course this is a cutthroat business but uh, you know be willing to listen and learn from anyone even the most horrible uh, self-centered individual could uh, you know give you great advice that you can pick and, 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 and you know use uh, parts of what he or she says to your advantage and uh, lastly I have to say this be reliable um, Nobody thinks it's cool for you to be fashionably late when you're trying to come up. You know, I'm one of those people, and I've been in the game for 20 years. I'm still on time, if not early for events. I tell my clients, don't be late. That fashionably late stuff doesn't work. It's not cool because, you know, you always have to remember that you're dealing with somebody else's time also. And it's just a respect issue. So I think reliability, you know, not having a habit of canceling shows, or being late for events or meetings, you know, to have a reputation of, okay, we can count on this person, you know, to be uh, at this point, at this time, I think that's just important for character, at least mine anyway. So, uh, yeah, those are the principles that I think are, are very important when you're trying to, you know, um, progress in this business, and any business for that matter. show on April 1st of 2013. It's called Kerry's Corner. Um, what 
what happened was I actually was a co-host on an internet radio show called the Independent Forum um, that was at the time uh, on FLO Empire Radio, the network that my show was on. Uh, I was a co-host by accident. I came in. I was invited to be a guest, and uh, the, uh, the show's producer decided to just toss me on as a, as a co-host. And I acted a fool. My mouth is kind of slick and you know out of pocket. <laughs> I have a habit of saying what's on, you know, with no filter. That's me, you know, saying whatever's all, you know, off the top of my head without thinking about it. <laughs> And um, I'm sure I offend a lot of people, but I entertained a lot more people. And so after a couple of, you know, times, a couple of visits on the set of the Independent Forum, I was asked to stay on as, as permanent, as a permanent co-host. And, uh, you know, through my uh, experience working at radio stations, I worked at Power 105 also here in New York City, uh, which is the second uh, largest radio station in terms of listenership in the city. Um, you know, I took, but I was working in the promotions department. Uh, so I took what I learned from what I observed, uh, you know, at, at the major uh, commercial stations and I applied it to independent form with, you know, different ideas on how to make the show better, how to make the show more interactive, how to attract listeners, and of course, how to attract sponsors. Um, but the show's producer and I, just, we had creative differences. You know, he wanted to do things his way, and at the end of the day, it was his show. And he basically, you know, reminded me of that, you know, quite a few times. And finally, I was just like, you know what, uh, let's, maybe I should just, you know, do something different. But the uh, station's manager, uh, David Glover, he's the uh, CEO and founder of SLO Empire Radio Network, he, um, you know, he's like, you know, Kerry, you have a real talent. You know, one that I never even thought about. I never ever wanted to be an on-air person. But that's not something I aspired to be, you know. And, um, but he said my personality was very charismatic, and very comical, and people liked it, and that I should consider having my own show. And I was like, well, you know, that's kind of weird. You know, it's one thing to be a co-host, but to have your own show means that the whole world is looking at you. And, um, you know, so, um, it just happened, and you know, we actually started off um, with a with a full staff, and um, we debuted with some pretty good numbers. Um, and so far as listenership, we did pretty well the first day. Um, I ended up downsizing the staff, um, and so now it's basically just me. And uh, you know, I have guests that come in. I've interviewed Maria Davis who is a, 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 a huge voice, not only in the music community, but a, a, as a spokesperson for HIV and AIDS. You know, she happens to be a very dear friend of mine. Um, and so I've interviewed her, I've interviewed several groups and uh, old school recording artists, including Troop, who of course uh, hit big in the uh, early part of the 90s with uh, Spread My Wings. And all I do is think of you. So that was a great interview. Flo Anthony has become a great friend of mine. Um, she, of course, is an author, a celebrity journalist, a friend of the Jackson family, and uh, currently you can see her on uh, the Life After show, uh, which airs on TV One. She's a wonderful person, uh, broken a lot of records in her career uh, as, a, as a female black journalist. And uh, I've had the opportunity to interview her as well as Ramona Africa, who is uh, an activist, a political activist out of Philadelphia. So um, I guess what makes my show different is that I tend to interview people, everyone from up and coming artists to, you know, seasoned old school celebrities to political figures, um, magazine uh, CEOs. You know, I try to keep it fresh and, 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 and varied. Again, I'm, I get bored with routine, so, you know, I try to make sure my listeners hear something different from somebody, you know, that's inspiring and successful. Um, that's different, though. And the other thing is, you know, as far as the songs that I play on my show, it's about, I play quality music in my rotation, not popular music. You know, so I'm not going to play you know, what's hot just because it's hot. I'm gonna play good music because I think people will enjoy it, you know. I'm actually the only show on FL on Pi Radio, I'm told, that does 
wasn't about swearing. That's just, it's, it's just because, well, for one, I want sponsors. I mean, now the stuff that I say is pretty raunchy, but you're not going to hear me say a swear. You're not going to hear that. Because my show is geared towards adults, for sure. But it's tasteful. It's, just, it's a way to be tasteful and still be, you know, funny. You know, and as far as the news, you don't need to listen to Kerry's Corner to hear the news. You could go to CNN or, the, you know, I'm not trying to, I'm trying to give you something else that the, you know, the other shows are not going to give you. their dreams, especially uh, younger people uh, that live in urban areas, you know, like I grew up in, the Roxbury section of Boston, you know, there's a lot of violence in the streets, uh, you know, gang violence, uh, you know, a lot of violence involving um, teens and their girlfriends, and they, you know, it's just, it, it's just totally, it's just totally out of control, and uh, I basically spent a lot of time utilizing the, the resources that I have, artists with radio, etc. Trying to reach out to kids and, uh, you know, inspire them to, to do better. I, you know, there's been a couple of kids, a couple of situations where, you know, I've met kids at events and later found out that, you know, they were in gangs or they were thinking about joining a gang or worse, thinking about, you know, shooting somebody that shot one of their homies. But they saw what I was doing and told me that they decided that they wanted to do what I was doing. You know, got themselves internships or got themselves enrolled in school. And that's kind of like, that that feeling is like no other. You know, I don't have my own kids. So it's so rewarding to be able to touch the lives of other young people. So uh, to inspire them to, you know, change directions in the course of their lives, if their lives are on the course for destruction, is certainly, um, more rewarding than any award I could ever get, and um, so that's that's basically. Um, I think those are the, the biggest accomplishments that I've had over the years. Uh, they, they have been the ability to uh, inspire young people to you know be upwardly mobile and, and to be persons that want to build their community instead of tear it down. efforts uh, to help out, 
you know, with HIV awareness and research. And uh, Maria Davis is, uh, has her own organization, a non-for-profit organization called Can't Be Silenced. And uh, it basically, you know, is used to promote awareness of HIV, to let people know that it hasn't gone anywhere, that, you know, people are still getting infected, and people are living longer because the medications have improved and because people are getting tested and it's becoming, it's getting detected earlier, but people are still dying, and, you know, I think there seems to be, and Maria would agree, there seems to be this kind of forgetfulness when it comes to, you know, being safe with, you know, with your sexual partners. Um, so I try to uh, be a vessel for HIV awareness also. And then my dad, you know, was murdered in Boston in 1996, the day before Father's Day. It was a random act of violence to this day. It's a cold case. I have no idea who shot him. You know, the streets don't talk. And so, you know, I don't even know, you know, who took my father away from me the day before Father's Day. I have a little brother, you know, he's an author. Uh, Marcus Johnson Smith, and you know, he only got to enjoy my dad for 10 years. I think Marcus was 10 years old um, when my father passed away. And uh, you know, it's, it's for what? You know, we, you know, there's been no arrests, nothing. So, you know, no closure for me or my brother or the many people that love my dad. But what, you know, instead of being vindictive and, you know, acting out and being angry. I just kind of decided to, you know, help other people who, you know, either are going through the same thing I went through and that my brother went through in, as far as dealing with loss or dealing with people that pull the, pull the trigger. Asking them, you know, do you realize what the repercussions are? First of all, of course, you could go to jail. You could be shot. But the other side of that is I want them to know what it's like be on the other side of that gun. And I'm not just talking about the person who gets shot because in theory, it's not so much the person that dies that suffers. They're gone, they're free from pain. You know, I don't know what the afterworld is like, of course, I've never been dead. But I do know that, you know, it's the people that are living that really suffer, you know, forever in some cases. You know, I still have dreams about, you know, my father, and I still wonder what it would be like if he was here to see me doing this and that. And that, you know, you know, 1996 that happened. So I try to do a lot of work, uh, you know, especially in Boston. You know, I co-founded Peace Night, which is an event that we do every year at the, at the city's only skating rink, at the Shame Food Skating Rink in Boston. And it's an opportunity for kids to come out, you know, meet artists, uh, be in music videos and, and be mentored by the people that they look up to. So, uh, yeah, those things are very important to me. Ooh, um, yeah, well, I just released my first book in April of 2013 uh, called Wanderer's Game. It's uh, doing pretty well. Five stars on Amazon consistently, so I can't complain. Um, definitely getting uh, the support of, of my readers. Uh, I wanted to uh, be an author since I was nine. So, uh, you know, uh, finally in 2012, towards the end of 2012, I decided, you know what? It's time to make it happen. No, 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 no better time like the present. So my little brother, Marcus Johnson Smith, who had put out a book of his own a couple of years earlier, um, I asked him to come and help me as far as publishing it, it or self-publishing it, you know, showing me how to do it or, uh, you know, what channels I had to go through to get, you know, different things done as far as pressing it and um, printing it. I um, was fortunate enough to have a good friend of mine, uh, Robert Edwards, uh, who did the artwork for the cover of The Wanderers Game, did a phenomenal job. Uh, so, like I said, it's doing pretty well. And, uh, you know, I hit the, the road a lot, book tours. And, you know, I've been to D.C., of course, here in New York, I've been to Boston, Philadelphia. You know, I'm trying to get out there on the road more because I love definitely shaking hands with the, the readers, uh, the supporters of, of, of my book project. Uh, so, definitely another book. Um, I wrote five.
five different books um, around the same time period back in 2006. The Wanderers game was the one I decided to put out first because it seemed to be the most controversial. So, um, well, with, with the topic, you know, it seemed to be the most controversial topic that people gravitated towards. So, the next book uh, will be out hopefully, you know, sometime this year, 2014. Um, can't say which one, so I'll just leave it as a surprise in the meantime. Go right to Amazon.com and look up Kerry Singleton, The Wanderer's Game, and you can uh, pick up the book. Um, and also, uh, Julia Robertson, who uh, was in a group called Ex Girlfriend that was popular in the early 90s. It was uh, a group of four women from New York City. Uh, who, uh, the group was produced by Full Force. And um, ex girlfriend released two albums um, that had lukewarm sales, um, but the music was hot, the dance routines were hot, and the vocals were untouchable. Uh, actually, Stacey Francis is probably the best known member of that group. Um, she performed on X Factor a couple of years back, uh, and she's also infamously known for being the uh, woman that. Uh, got into an argument with Whitney Houston just before she passed. So, uh, Stacey Francis was one of the four members of that group. And um, Julia Robertson, probably the most charismatic member of the group, um, has decided to embark on a solo career. And I've been blessed that she and I have become friends. I mean, you know, it's kind of weird to become very close friends with somebody whose records you listen to over and over. Like, I was a huge fan of theirs. Huge! I played their record out. So, you know, and now not only my, you know, great friends with Julia, um, I'm also her manager. So we're putting out her uh, project. We're going to be working with super producer Eric Major, who's worked with everyone. Um, Chris Michael, who's written stuff for Lil Mo and uh, several other artists. And uh, so we got a hell of a team, man. We got uh, Judy Rouse one of the greatest photographers in New York City and she's on board and uh, we're going to be doing some video work too with uh, Black Chrome uh, Productions up in Massachusetts. Uh, so I'm, I'm very, very excited about uh, the direction for the Julia Robertson project as well as the release of another book and uh, I think I think you guys will have a lot to look forward to as far as uh, Carrie Jenkins is concerned in the near future. to Julia Robertson's project, I'm um, working with Carol Brown, who is Bobby Brown's younger sister. Uh, she has uh, Milk the Moment Entertainment, that's her management company, production company. Um, phenomenal artists that she's working with, several of whom are her nephews. Um, she's also working on a movie version of her book, and her book is, uh, is phenomenal. It's a book about you know, her life being Bobby Brown's younger sister, you know, what it was like to, you know, watch his career from uh, New Edition to being one of the, you know, most famous solo artists of our time. And um, in addition, uh, along with her brother Tommy Brown, uh, Tommy who of course produced many of Bobby's, or co-produced many of Bobby's biggest records, um, they're a uh, new uh, reality show is on its way out and then it's called The Real Browns and it'll focus on uh, the Brown siblings uh, so and I've had the opportunity to meet Bobby's uh, siblings they are wonderful people and his nephews uh, such a warm family I had the, the honor of meeting his dad before his dad passed uh, a couple of years back and it's just a great family um, so definitely be on the lookout for that um, I'm really excited to announce that G Money the Prince um, one of my other clients, he's actually an on-air personality at Hot 93.7 FM, which is in Harvard, Connecticut. One of the most popular uh, uh, radio personalities on that station is looking at uh, a, a, a TV project with Fuse Network. So we're really working hard to, uh, you know, get his stuff out there, and I'm sure you'll you'll, you'll hear from him. Uh, and last but not least, uh, Monica Hassan, who is a collage artist. And, uh, you know, she's definitely, you know, making a slash with her 
my best self art uh, collage pieces, uh, Afrocentric themed pieces of art made with different materials. It's just it's, it's incredible. You guys gotta really get into that. So uh, uh, those are the clients that I'm working with currently, and, and definitely um, I look forward to uh, showcasing them, you know, to everybody uh, throughout 2014. I think urban music, uh, which would encompass, of course, hip hop, jazz, and R and B, as well as blues. Um, it's given those of us that have put that music out, primarily um, and then women of color, uh, a sense of identity, an opportunity for our stories to be told to the masses, our pains, our struggles. Not just economic struggles and um, social struggles, but intimate personal struggles. You know, um, the African American experience as far as love and relationships are concerned. We've been able to utilize music to bring that to uh, a more uh, wide stream, a mainstream, excuse me, audience. Um, so it's, it's given us an opportunity to tell our story. And we have, our stories are as varied as our people. You know, all black people are not the same. We don't all like the same things. You know, so we have different experiences and we've been able to use music to uh, talk about those experiences as varied as they are. And again, I go back to the fact that uh, it's giving us, it's given us a sense of identity. You know, urban music, whether it be jazz, hip hop, soul, uh, R&B or rap, um, it's our music, you know, still our music, it's our sound, it's our story, and uh, it's our identity, and so uh, I think, personally, that's the uh, the most positive thing. Back in the 80s, it also was used to unite people. Unfortunately, that's not so much the case today, but hip-hop initially uh, became an opportunity for people to, you know, talk about the struggle and unite, as Latifah did, as uh, Public Enemy did, you know, so, uh, but yeah, it's, it's definitely been an opportunity for a statement to be made, uh, Stevie Wonder is famous for using his voice, um, both as a musician and as a, 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 a spokesperson, a humanitarian, to get Martin Luther King's birthday made a national holiday, you know. So, I mean, urban music has done a lot um, to change the face of America, socially, economically, and uh, personally. So Essence. Um, I have to admit that I was intrigued by the name of your magazine. Um, I'm a writer myself, and so titles and words are important to me. They're not just forms of communication, to me they're art. And so, I mean, the soul is your inner being. It's your hidden voice, it's something that you can't see, but you know that it's there. You know, it, it, it's you, more so than your arms, your legs, your ears, and your feet. It's truly who you are. And uh, then, of course, essence, uh, that defines one character. The essence of a person is, the, is their true self. And so, the phrase soul essence to me, it's the true essence of something. And in this case, it's a magazine. So I guess, to me, um, Soul Essence Magazine, the title would imply that uh, you're going to, when you open up the magazine, you're going to get the true character of the people that are in the magazine, as well as the people that have put the magazine together. So that's my definition.